Vinny Tortorich here. Hey, man, if you're a fan of Vizzy, you might be a fan of me, too. I'm the guy that gets people to lose a lot of weight. I have something free for you guys. This is no clickbait. Just go to VinnyTortorich.com, and there's a big banner. It's a free PDF, How to Lose Weight. It's an intro guide to NSNG at VinnyTortorich.com. Go check it out exclusively for anyone who listens to Izzy Presley. Thank you. Replay Guitar Exchange is your premier independent guitar store. Being independent is good. With all of the major brands, including new, vintage, and pre-owned, you can find the guitar, bass, amp, or accessory you are dreaming of. From vintage to the newest models, Replay Guitar Exchange can help you find that perfect piece. They have industry veteran expert staff, all players like you, down to the owner. You aren't just getting a great guitar, you're getting the replay difference. Find them online at replayguitar.com and find your dream guitar today. Hey ladies, Sass Pants Designs will take that rock shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsdesigns.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook for special offers and custom orders. That's sasspantsdesigns.com, sasspantsdesigns.com. Sass Pants will make you the envy of the party. RockstarLeatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out RockstarLeatherworks.com. Hi, this is Bobby Brown, and welcome to another fucking podcast. You kids with your loud music and your Dan Fogelberg, your Zima, hula hoops, and Pac-Man video games, don't you see people today have attention spans that can only be measured in nanoseconds? See, son, old legends never die. They just lose weight. Like a legend and an outer world from with a lot of light. <laughs> Yes, it is party time. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. Hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you, and as always, good to be seeing Izzy Presley here. The Monday Night Show, which is usually the Izzy Presley Show, but uh, two interviews this week. Tonight, I have Chris Wise in studio from Hollywood Vampires and Owl. And uh, tomorrow night, Kip Winger will be calling in. Rather excited about that. So the Izzy Presley Show won't be until Thursday. I was going to do a special one today at 4 p.m., but... uh, I was just going to get into all the shooting and all that shit. But I'm like, I just can't. I just can't do it. It's just, there's no point. There's just no point. So I said, fuck it. Um, I'm just going to roll with the three shows this week, which is what it always is. Please hit up all the sponsors, all those great sponsors. Hit up the social media at Real Izzy Presley all the way across the board. And, of course, the show page, which is another effing podcast. Merch is available, as you all know. Please go buy it. Uh, cause you know, I like money and stuff. If you don't want my shirts, PayPal is Izzy Presley at yahoo.com. If you do want to donate to the show, donations are always welcome and always appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen in studio, welcome back to the show. My good friend from the Hollywood vampires and owl, formerly of Ace Fraley and the cult, Mr. Chris Wise. Hey, hey, Izzy. Dude, it's good to have you back, man. What's happening? Nice to be here. Yeah. Um, let's, uh. Good plan and hello. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Bruce. Avoiding all the political shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do what I can, man. I really do what I can. Um, let's get the A stuff out of the way first because we have a whole lot to talk about with the vampires and all and all that stuff coming up. Um, it, you've been out of A's for it's been a year now, hasn't it? It's been almost yeah, a year. something like that. Um, yeah, I can't remember the exact dates and stuff like that, but um, the Hollywood vampires started taking over a little bit, and I wasn't able to do shows, and gotcha. uh, Ace's World morphed into what it is now, but it was a fantastic run. I was just mm-hmm. kind of putting it together, like four years with uh, the Spaceman as his bass player and sort of buddy, too, in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, you know, I've stayed at his house a lot when he was down in San Diego, and... Um, <clears throat> 
you, you bond when you spend that kind of home time and eating and hard work and all that. And I got to work on Origins and uh, Space Invader. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to, yeah, and it's been a little while now. But um, those records were a blast. And uh, there's this great kind of story about how Ace knew there was something wrong with me live where I was kind of feeling some pain. And it was a hernia mm. in my groin that I had to get it taken care of, you know. Years of, you know, lugging Ampeg amps and <laughs> yep. being an upright bassist and jumping around the stage like an idiot, you know. Um, <clears throat> you know, kind of caught up. So he noticed it and said, hey, man, you should go to my doctor. You need someone to take care of you. I'll take care of you. Uh, him and his fiance, you know. So um, that was really cool. I mean, like, you got a picture being in this gorgeous San Diego penthouse looking over the airport. And Ace Fairley bringing you penne pasta. <laughs> and he'd go, don't get out of bed. Don't get out of bed. What are you doing? And he, he was so funny. And it was so fun. So, you know, Ace and I are forever sort of, uh, you know, rock and roll brothers. Yeah, yeah. You know. And uh, he gave me a bass solo every night, which was so funny because people knew me for years with the cult, which is a kind of certain style of bass playing that's... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, real pulsing and, and strong, but it, it wasn't very busy. Uh, so, you know, I would do this bass solo every night and friends would come up to me after and meet me at the after show thing or whatever and go, I had no idea you could play like that. So it's fun, you know, it's all different roles and different yeah, yeah. things I play, but the bass solo is a special treat because it really made me dig as an artist, uh, bassist, you know, and to entertain a crowd by yourself. Yeah, I mean, were you in studio... Um for Origins, when he had the special guests come in, like when Slash came in and all that stuff, or was that stuff all done by a, Essentially, you know. I did everything just Ace and I. Okay. Um, and then the tracks would get uh, shipped out to Slash. Gotcha. He might have done some with Slash in person, too. Uh, I don't know all the exact details, but for the most part, it was just Ace and I hanging out, and he's engineering, and I'm yeah, playing yeah. bass. And he'd go, I don't know, I think you can do it again. You know? And it was never that uptight. Um, and it was really fun. So, after being in the cult for ten years, it was like this new, fresh energy. You know, uh, when I, I, I hate to keep talking about this stuff, but you know, of course, I'm a Kiss geek and an Ace geek, so I, <laughs> you know, I have to ask questions about this because we've never officially talked about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, when you guys were doing Origins, was all those songs were those all Ace's ideas, or was he asked? It's like, dude, hey, well, do you have any good song ideas for this for this cover record? Uh, you know, he was originally talking about. My Generation with Paul Stanley, I remember. Mm. And I thought, oh, pff, I'm going to have fun with that one. You right. Know, one of the first kind of early bass guitar solos of all time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and uh, that, I was like, that'll be cool. But Fire and Water came about. I guess it was just, you know, discussion. You know, there it was like, Paul, what would you want to do once he was sort of, you know, on mm -hmm. board or whatever and slash did an awesome job on emerald uh you know the kind of talking back guitar thing is really exciting yeah and phil being an irish good irish roman catholic boy from new york uh you know playing phil means a lot and uh thin lizzy you know yeah absolutely <clears throat> so you know the whole thing was just fantastic and it had its time and uh and I was unable to do shows with him, and there was a soul, you know, this, the story's not important, really. It's just that that lineup was amazing while it lasted, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, maybe everyone's lives were changing at that point in the band in a lot of ways, you know. Mm -hmm. But mine was changing working with the Hollywood Vampires and uh, literally couldn't do some shows. And so that started changing the whole story of Ace and I. And it had nothing, it had, there's zero negativity in that yeah, story, yeah. you know. Uh, he called a couple weeks ago just to say hey. So, uh, you know, I really appreciate him, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, well, fuck, you you got to play with one of your childhood heroes. You know? Yeah, but he's a buddy. Like, well, you know, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. I've been very disappointed by some of them as well. So, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just like the rock and roll selfish thing. It's just some of these guys don't realize it. You know, they're just so caught up with themselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, overly self aware and, you know, kind of not experiencing maybe the same experiences other people but i think ace is uh he's got that down to earth thing i appreciate so let's go to the uh, the fire and water uh the video you know being on stage with ace and paul together fantastic experience uh funny enough 
Paul knew me because he had hired me for the Paul Stanley band. Really? So really? I, I had done mo- the Motown gig when he was brewing that up and might have been doing that still uh, if it wasn't for the Ace gig. Wow. You know, and there was I also, yeah, we did like these rock and roll Led Zeppelin cream kind of sets too for like benefits and his son would get up, Evan, mm-hmm. Eric Singer, Ty from uh, Vintage Trouble, you know, people in the family sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Raphael. R- yeah, right. Yeah. Hoffa. Yeah. Yeah. So that whole crew, great, great bunch of musicians. So I was just honored to get the call because I was doing the all-star bands around Hollywood like Camp Freddy. Mm-hmm. And there I am at uh, Andre's number one leather and boots place. And like a week before, I, I met Paul Stanley, hit it off with him, did rehearsal, did the set. And um, I'm in Andre's uh, number one, it was called. I just moved. And I'm looking up there and I'm like going, oh, man, I got to get this leather jacket fixed. But yeah, there's all the kiss boots here. How funny. You know, they made them. And I, as I'm saying that in my head, I turn around and Paul Stanley's there going, Chris. And I'm like, what? Paul? And I said, hey, we should do that again. It was so fun jamming. And he said, absolutely. And then um, then he called me. So it was like this, this <laughs> strange kind of constantly hooking up with the right people. Um, when I got the call for Mick Jagger, for example, uh, from Marty Fredrickson to go do some tracks, this was years ago. Um, I don't know what that was, 2001 or something. Yeah, maybe 2001 or two. I remember working with him and having a blast and then um, tracking upright bass, having dinner, drinking wine, having a laugh with Mick. And I don't know, like a week later again, I'm in front of my house up on Wonderland getting the mail and this stretch limo goes by and the last the window in the back of the thing goes down and it's Mick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> As I'm getting the mail in like my sweatpants. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like in like Adidas outfit or something. And because uh, these guys are so royal, you just don't want to bump into anyone. Right. You know? <laughs> but that's Laurel Canyon for you. So I'm like, Mick, what are you doing here? What's going on? He's like, hey, you know, he turned me on to the idea of this multi-producer who's working with uh, Danny Saber, who lived up the road at the time. So I thought that was so interesting. Um, the timing and the... The thing, it's like certain things are really destined, you know. Yeah, it's well. I, I think the the thing about this town uh, and and the business, obviously, it's. I mean, yeah, you can be a great player, but it's right place, right time. You All of I mean? it. it, yeah. It's this amazing alchemy of an amazing amount of stuff that makes you get those things, helps you get those things. Right, right, right. And so, also, you know, <clears throat> the ace thing. I feel like I I channeled as well. Um, just being a, such a Kiss fan like you, you know. Yeah. And then I met him when I was in the cult. Uh, I did his DVD behind the player, and that's how we met because oh, all the all the musicians in town were getting called like, "Hey, Ace is doing a DVD, and would you be part of it?" Like John Five, uh, of course, John Five, Matt, Matt yeah. Sorum, uh, Shavo stopped by. A lot of like he wasn't playing. I was the only bass player for the day, but there's other drummers. Tommy from Sabbath, Ozzy um, on drums, Scott Coogan. And uh, at the time, they offered me the gig, the Ace gig way back then. Uh, but I couldn't do it because I was, I was in, in the middle of a record with the cult. Okay. And uh, I was contractually committed. And, you know, I was kind of in deep with them anyway. I, I was really, I wasn't going anywhere at that point. Yeah, I mean, you had been with them for how long? I mean, yeah, it was almost a decade, essentially. But, um... You know, all these things kind of kept coming coming around. Just uh, I think for the love of it, and then I do I do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's, that's important. That's important. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I work pretty hard at it. Before I, even the first rehearsal is usually, you know, I want to have fun when I get to rehearsal. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, look, that is, I learned this a long time ago. I used to work for this band back home called Brat Pack Radio. Ryan Lance, um, singer for this uh, this. Um, uh, quartet out of Fargo. Um, they did McDonald's Girl. Um, mm-hmm. They ended up in the commercials, and they think they got a Grammy for that and all that kind of shit. But he's got this band called Brat Pack Radio, where it's all '80s stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And they wear the costumes and they have the funky names like uh, Gilbert Downey Jr. and all that kind of shit. And they're they're really good, they're really really good. But the thing I learned from him is he only worked with pros, and know your shit, show up and play it. 
Yeah. Uh, you know? Uh, it's funny. We'll keep going Kiss here, uh, but it's okay. I remember in the Paul Stanley band, I could not beat Paul Stanley to rehearsal, essentially being earlier than Really? Me. Yeah. He, every time I'd be like, okay, I'm going to show up early today, coffee, everything's already dialed. <clears throat> he was very strict about time, and I could, could have guessed it long before I even got asked to do anything like this. But uh, being a KISS fan, kind of knowing their ethics, and, and I think that's a good one, but I could not beat him to the studio. And that was just kind yeah, of another funny KISS story, you know. Yeah. Um, Paul's got really good ears. He was great to work with, you know. Well, I mean, fuck. And, the, and the video was another, like you mentioned, just like... It, we were in such a daze because we were on tour and we happened to have to fly in from Florida on a day off mm -hmm. to shoot the video and then fly right back. So we were just like, you know, someone... Someone slapped us, and <laughs> they say run, you know? It's just like, right, oh. right. But is, is it there at any point where you just have to stop and pinch yourself and realize that I'm on stage with two original members of KISS right now? Yeah, and I'm so different than Gene Simmons, you know? Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm like, uh, and I really respect Gene, and I've had chats with Gene. He, he watched uh, one of the whole shows on the side of the stage, and uh, another funny KISS story. Uh he was asking my tech and everyone around when Ace is doing his solo now, and I'm off the stage. I get a break. Mm -hmm. And um, he was asking my tech, like, what the heck is he using? When is, was he actually playing two things at once? What just happened? And, I, <laughs> and uh, like, you know, all this kind of funny stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I kind of do. I take it pretty far out there. Yeah, yeah. I have my own style, I think. But, you know, uh, there's some... Victor Wooten, Billy Sheehan tricks or whatever. I just have my own style about the way I go about it, but uh, maybe a little more psychedelic or something, but uh, and classical. So at the end of it all, Gene came up to me, and now we're talking, and he goes, I'm very upset with you. And I said, I said, why? What are you talking about? And he said, you know, because you're playing better than me. It was kind of like a, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a cute kind of a compliment because yeah, it's, yeah, it yeah. doesn't really, you know... He, th that's not exactly true, but uh, he was giving me a nice compliment. And I said, Gene, man, you're one of my guys. And he goes, no, I'm not. Not the way you play. And I go, yeah, you're one of my guys. Like, I'm serious. And he takes out a $20 bill and hands it to me, like a tip for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and now now at this point... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Time <laughs> you got money from Gene Simmons yes, instead sir, of giving indeed. money to yes, Gene It's, it's a fun, fun little story. And it keeps going, too, because now... You want to talk about surreal, you're talking about pinching yourself. I'm talking to Gene. Ace is now into the smoker bit. And it's like, this is going on. It's the stage, but it's the background of my story because I'm there on the side of the stage with Gene. And I go, Gene, you got to be kidding me. You just gave me $20 bill. I go, you got to sign this. So not only did he sign it, he made the presidential face Gene Simmons and painted his makeup of on it. Of course he did. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was, I, I, was, I was waiting for you to say, well, I, I have, when, when he's like, I, I have a problem with you, uh, did you actually pay for that <laughs> did you actually pay for that Kiss cell phone holder? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, John Five was at that show too, funny enough, backstage. Of course he was. Yeah, big Kiss fan. Yes, he, do, you ever, do, you, do you watch his Instagram? The, I haven't. The Knights and Satan mm. Service one, where he posts all the oh. all the shit that he buys. Oh, really? And it's just like expensive shit that nobody would ever fucking think still exists. I I think out of all the guitar players right now, he's a uh, he's holding the torch for real guitar hero. Maybe him and like kind of other names like after uh, <clears throat> Eddie Van Halen, and we were talking about like obviously there's Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, Ace Frehley. But uh, Richie Kotzen, too, another, yeah, Kotzen. another ripping player. But uh, I love John Five's presentation and the fun because, you know, he has a lot of fun with it. And I just saw one of his new videos, all these girls around the pool. Yeah, yeah, it was Like cool. doing some sort of gas mask, getting high thing. It was really fun. Uh, so uh, to do instrumental music, I commend him. Yeah, dude, that's uh, that's not easy in this day and age, you know. Cause no, it's not. And that's why I created Owl because I, I had my own kind of writing, singing uh, upright bass, which is how the mm -hmm. heck? How am I going to get that into a, a band unless it, we start incorporating it? Right. Um, so, getting the electric upright bass happened in the uh, 1997 90, when I was in a band called Lusk, and Paul Demore from Tool was the guitar player. Funny mm -hmm. enough, but he was the bass player of Tool and bought me that electric upright bass. That's kind of 
famously been following me around now for the last, uh, I don't know, however many years that is, 22 right, right. years, you know. So I've been using that with the Vampires as well, and Owl, and a lot of bands over the years. It's, it's a very special, magical instrument. It's uh, called the Messenger Upright Bass, uh, Newts and Luthery in Forestville. And I love how you always bring it out when you uh, play a sound check. You know? Well, why, why show up and just do, you know, something uh, that is easy? It's always a yeah, little more I challenging. It. I have to watch it backstage, too, because it's a very sensitive instrument. So I'm, I have right. to guard it like I have some child infant with me. It's insane, but it's, uh, it's how it goes. But people get off on it when I do it, and it's so fun to see the, the faces light up and, like, yeah. what on earth's happening right now? If they haven't seen it, I... I they're like, this is rocking so hard, but it's upright bass, you know? Yeah, that's cool, man. And distorting it and affecting it's a lot of fun. Because now my, my parameters, my realm of, of sonics, is it's infinite. You yeah, know? absolutely. Oh, we got some uh, listener feedback here. Uh, Dick Chasen says, that's the dream. Ace taking you under his wing. Uh, Mike says, <laughs> $20 from Gene. I bet he uses those for toilet paper. Uh, Mike, <laughs> not with his face on it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm very lucky to be kind of uh, accepted in that Kiss family world of thing. Uh, yeah, the uh, it, it, everything's a little different, even though I'm a hard rock kind of essentially bassist. But I have this kind of classical black uh, backbone, and um, you know that's kind of different too. Ace would always go when after my bass solo. He's like, "You're the Randy Rhodes on the bass," because he heard all the classical bits, right? <laughs> and uh, so. You know, everyone brings something a little different. Uh, and on the new uh, record, Rise, from the Hollywood Vampires, I have an actual bass piece, which is 14 bowed basses at once at one point. We are going to listen to that at some point. Yeah, yeah. And I got to bring that to Johnny and work on it with him, and he called it a pitiful beauty <laughs> as part of his uh, kind of story of, like, the record's got so many layers. I, first of all, Alice Cooper delivering these songs... Yeah. insanely cool and and second of all you know you got this lineup from hell where everybody's just dead on pretty amazing you right know? Well, joe I, perry and johnny depp and alice cooper and then you got the rest of the band tommy henrickson is like super secret secret weapon oh he's amazing and dude. um he writes a lot of this stuff with the guys and he's very generous you know he wants you to do your thing and so does Johnny, and uh, we don't work hard at it in the sense of um, the gelling part. Mm -hmm. We work hard on getting getting doing the work, but like Glenn and I, for example, Glenn Sobel, oh, he's a monster, one of the best, uh, and, and just total gentleman and pleasure to work with. Like, there's no hard work. We just we already did it. We show up and we kind of it locks in right away. It's unreal. And uh, Joe Perry's Joe Perry. Like he the, the, he oozes cool from every, yeah, yeah. everything. And um, you have Buck Johnson from Aerosmith in the band as well, the keyboard player that's just oh, okay. to die for vocalist and sings above Steven Tyler the whole show. I mean, my God, that's some pipes. Yeah, absolutely. How did uh, – so you were still an ace when the Vampires thing started. How did you get – involved with the vampires how did did they call you did you just run into somebody randomly how, how did that uh, happen no none of it's really random as you know i mean it's like a, a million baby steps that get you to the place that you're at yeah um, so uh ace freely band with scott coogan richie scarlet myself at the time was opening up for alice cooper in australia okay and tommy and i got to know each other over coffee and such and uh, he told me Robert DeLeo is going out with Stone Temple Pilots. I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cool. And it didn't register, like, over coffee and a bagel or something. And uh, he's like, you see what I'm saying? There's an opening. And he goes, I think you'd be the guy. And I'm like, whoa. And it just you know, organically just popped in. And I tucked it away and tried to forget about it because it's – Everyone wanted the gig. Well, of course. I, every, every guy that you can think of wanted to play bass with them. And uh, I just, just you know, I think I had a natural fit again. Just like I did with Ace. Just like when I met the Cult. Just like when I played with Jerry Cantrell. Which, uh, Eric Bradley's an owl. From We were the, the singers in Jerry Cantrell. 
And uh, so that's great to have Eric and Owl because of yeah. the uh, vocal connection, years of friendship. He's like an L.A. brother. Mm-hmm. I have two brothers in New York that I love and... You know, but they're my blood brothers. But here in L.A., since I transplanted myself, I have certain friends that I, I consider very much like family, too, you know. Uh, and Eric's one of them. So there's a lot of confidence on the stage with Owl. We just did my birthday party there. That's right. And back. unfortunately, I was not there because I did have to work. I had bills to pay. Dude, it felt so good. It was two years off. Um, <clears throat> it was really kind of I, – I was – I was scared because <laughs> I hadn't sang any of these songs in two years, and it's the most difficult gig I, I've ever done because, um, you know, essentially I got to sing and play the most I ever do, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so it was. A, I just want to thank everyone to, that came out. It was like unreal how nice it was to be accepted back after. Be, you don't know if they're going to care, right? Yeah, I know. I, I, I don't know if they care. It's been a while. Yeah, so. it's been like two years. Yeah, that's yeah. And, and and in young people's years and the teens and stuff like that. Bands come and go in six months. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like it's still going over. Maybe better than ever. And I think it's time for people to get educated again on certain music. Like in the sense that people still call it a cello, and I think it's kind of funny. I get the confusion. But right, right, right. I, with the education in schools need to be such that everyone knows that's a bass, that's a cello, yep, that's yep. a viola, that's a violin. They know at least they exist, whether they get confused by the look or whatever for a second, you know. Um, that was essentially, everyone knew that stuff. I don't know what happened, like maybe 25 years Well, ago. yeah, because they don't teach music in school anymore. But how is that uh, like? How is that acceptable uh, to it's any not. parent? It's not. I don't have kids yet, you know, or I might not ever. I don't know. But if I was responsible for a child, I would be introducing music from the get go. Yeah, from music's, the get go. It's, it's such an important part of 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 learning. You yes. know, making your brain work. Have you seen that the uh, sort of I don't know kind of X ray type scans where people on. Uh, playing, playing. I'm saying on music, but like playing music. <laughs> well, it is a their drug. Their brains on music. It is a drug because we, you know, essentially. Whoa! Was that a ghost? What the heck just happened? What just happened? That oh, pin, that the, the bowling just, pin. It's it's not really stable okay. if it's not like <laughs> on something <laughs> solid. I had a friend pass away recently, so I'm just kind of like. Like Michael, is that you? <laughs> like it's been going it on a lot be. lately. It might Jeez, be. Louise. It might be. Maybe uh, maybe uh, Michael's just pissed because you didn't bring Johnny with you. <laughs> <laughs> I almost kicked you out. There's no Johnny Depp. All right, this is over. <laughs> everyone lo- everyone loves Johnny, and even backstage, where we did uh, Christmas pudding last year, it was a benefit uh, for Alice's school out uh-huh. there, arts and dance and yeah, stuff, yeah. music. Um, you know, coming backstage, uh, we knew Johnny wasn't going to make it, so it was kind of a. a Alice Cooper slash Vampire's Benefit Show, and we knew he couldn't make it because of this movie that he was doing. And uh, everyone, you know, the joke is, we don't even, like, when we say hi to each other, Alice would go, hey, Chris, where's Johnny? (laughs) (laughs) It's just like, you know... It's like back in the day when you go backstage to all these bands and stuff, you go, hey, man, great show, where's your beer? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You know, (laughs) it's just a whole big game to get beer. Yeah, exactly. tell them what they want to hear. Exactly, that's exactly what it is on the Monsters of Rock. Who's like, dude, that was an amazing set. Is that your cooler? <laughs> 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 Everyone's selfish, is he? Okay, I know. My God, I know. Well, but then again, most of us are poor musicians, so we have to drink everybody else's beer. Well, you know, I the, I, I find uh, what's a good domestic beer? You like Bud Light? Bud right? Lights. Um, yeah. Jeez, isn't that kind of like a marb light, though, with chemicals in it in the same way? I don't know. Uh, I'm a simple Midwestern kid. I like domestic light beers, Jack Daniels, and my fish fried. Mm-hmm. You know? I'd go Guinness and Jameson I, see, I like as a, a nice Irish boy. <laughs> I, I, like a, I like a nice Ham's beer. You know? <laughs> okay. It's from the land of sky blue waters. It's yeah, sort of, yeah. Uh, from up, at, up in uh, Wisconsin is where it's from. What would you pick for an American microbrew? I don't. No. No, no. I, I don't want the neck beer that comes along with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't like that hipster shit. I just, I just like my domestic because I know the hoppy exactly, ones and I stuff like that. I know exactly what I'm getting. It's cool, refreshing. You can drink a shitload of them without. I feel like garbage over. when I drink those hoppy ones. Yeah, I, there's two. I don't think it's natural. And it's probably GMOs and all that crap. I don't too. like chewing my beer. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. But Guinness is a uh, light beer in the sense of uh, in the sense of calories because Guinness is more. Uh, you can liken it to an Amstel Light, and people mm. don't know that. And I just go, well, you know, Guinness is such a heavy beer, and I go, no, it's it's a dark it's a dark flavor. It's not a heavy beer. Actually, I just got a question about the Christmas pudding. Uh, Bruce from Canada says, "I've seen the vampires at last year's Alice." Alice, Alice's Christmas pudding was cool, and he plans to do that again. Yeah, we did it with Orianti in place of, uh, and Joe wasn't there either. So it was like this kind of, yeah, it was like a hybrid show, you know. Um, <clears throat> Alice does it every year, and he's got this wonderful cause out there in a school, and um, well, we can look it up here on a break. Just to make sure I give everyone the details. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, well, you know, and I also forgot to say uh, really quick, Izzy, a really special person behind the whole thing and the vampires that, uh, like, sometimes people don't the, literally because you don't see her is Alice's wife Cheryl, mm-hmm. which is singing in the background with us at all times, and to witness those two together are one of the most that's like an american treasure the alice cooper family and the whole thing it's like yeah. really a special thing and cheryl is so uh graceful about everything and a lot of times you know she's she's singing with us you know like through everything so it's good to let people know she's there yeah, well she's always a part of alice's alice's show right but you, you don't know? know it as much in the right. vampires and so we're always on the plane together. We're going back and forth on the buses and, and transport whatever to the vehicle and uh, to the shows and all this. So, I mean, she's wonderful. And to just I, I just really wanted to make that statement about her because she people don't see her, you know, on the vampires. Was it show. a shock to you to go from from Ace? And this isn't belittling Ace at any at any any any, you know, level. But sure. I mean, Ace is at one level. And then you got the vampires at another level where you're going first class and private jets and all this stuff. Was that was that hard to take in at first? Well, I've I've done quite a bit of interesting things with these all star lineups kind of in the past. Uh kind of benefit like I remember a thing called the Ducati All Stars and kinda of like these sort of ESPN shows and we're just corporate money and you got treated really well. It would be like yeah. a whole entourage of rock stars and I'd be the bass player. So I had a lot of great experiences at, uh, uh, being treated well. Um, but with Ace, I, I, I looked at it as a new opportunity, especially, you know, he was really jazzed on me doing this bass solo so he could have a break every night too. It was another aspect of it to help the set, you know, getting your wind back and just recouping a little bit. So it was a pretty physical show. And uh, so we did, you know, funny Ace did this huge amount of like big festivals and then some just like theater shows. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was okay with it. And but people were seeing me play really vicious, ferocious bass for the first time uh, in that, you know, in that way. And it changed my whole life a little bit again too, and tinged me a little more uh, tuned in and turned on. Well, I tell you, let's um, let's do this. Let's take a uh, let's take a break before we, we're going to go into the break, and uh, because uh, every time Chris comes on the show, he strong arms me, throws me in a headlock, and starts giving me noogies, <laughs> and says, "You're going to play music on this show, and I don't give a shit what you think. Um, and uh, if you don't, you will never meet Johnny Depp ever again. Um, you so you are going to play music, and this is what I'm going to do. We're gonna we're gonna play this uh, song from the Vampires called Heroes." Um, let's yeah, let's talk about before we play it. Uh, tell oh us, my goodness! Yeah, this, this came is the only, out so good. This is the only cover on the record, correct? Uh, no, there's a couple. Uh, you can't put your arms around a memory from uh, Johnny Thunders. Oh, okay. Joe Perry sings. Uh, came out great. Um, but the bulk of the record, ninety percent or more, uh, is original, and I'm, we're, we're all really proud of it, man. Because uh, we've all gone through our struggles to get maybe to something so special you know and even joe i went to go see aerosmith a couple weeks uh last month or whatever it was and joe's like man we gotta we gotta book more stuff like people would die to have like you know a top 10 record all around the world right. number one in certain places and stuff and and we're, we're not touring it but uh we're doing tv promos and mm. next year i can't say anything exactly but I see international touring again and all that. Next year is also going to be like a wind up to like, you know, other videos and releases off this album. So it's going to be 
well supported into next year and probably the end of next year from what i understand just know. remember this when you go on tour izzy is a great stagehand uh, he's <laughs> not a douche um he doesn't get starstruck and uh he's a hard worker mm-hmm. hard worker I like um style. let's uh, before we play the song though i i, I did want to bring this up because it, you know people online are just fucking dicks and when you guys did Kimmel, there's a lot of, like, oh, he's not, Johnny's not actually singing. That's a track. He wasn't singing. There's no tracks no, involved with this no, band, correct? No. I've, I can't even think of a band I've ever been in that did that. There's one band called Big Blue Missile with Scott Weiland years ago. We had tracks, and it was kind of a project, side project. Mm-hmm. And that was fun, but... um. It was also obvious because we had laptops on stage, <laughs> and, and right. we made we made it high tech, you know, uh, on purpose. So, but I think when bands do it to get away with their their lack of talent now or ability, it's very disappointing. Oh, you know? I agree. I, well, how do you feel like? How do you feel about? And obviously, not auto tuned to the point of what they do in pop music, where it's mm-hmm. just sounds like fucking robots. How do you feel about musicians using that a little bit? just to help out live supplementation i think is okay uh i just think like if you're gonna pay money to go see someone go kick some butt on stage you want to see him really do it that's all you know you feel like you're getting gypped no i agree if i if if i do these owl shows and i kind of keep it to a lighter fair set don't bring out the upright bass no wild banshee heavy parts like they kind of they, they don't dominate the set, but they're explosive when they hit. Like, people mm-hmm. want it all. They want all that stuff when they come and see me. And if I just go, no, I'm going to take the easy road. I don't want to do any, like, kind of wild banshee screaming tonight. you got to dig deep to do things, you know? Yeah. And if you can't dig deep to do it anymore, you might want to take a look at why the heck you're doing it, you know? It's an excellent point. Tell you what, we're going to play that song right here. But before we play the song, I want to tell you about Beater Amplification, sponsor of the first half of the show. I'd love me some Beater Amplification. That's too easy. BeaterAmplification.com, 100 watts of testicular fortitude, two pull two tubes, you got yourself 53 channels, hand-wired, hand-built, you get your old-school Metallica tone, old-school ACDC tone, and that old-school clean-ass Fender tone, and the Izzy Presley TCB1 is in production. Yeah, That's baby. right, my signature series amplifier, Jeez, believe man. it or not. Hey, man, I, 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 congratulations. Thank you, thank you, and he's going to start building bass heads, too. Just an FYI. So here is off of the uh, Hollywood Vampires record. It's called Rise. Which is called Rise, which is available now everywhere you can buy albums. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not on vinyl. It's everywhere. Everywhere. It's everywhere. Go buy the physical okay. product. And uh, I actually just purchased it on iTunes, but I did pay for it. I'm not a streamer because that shit, I mean, we could go on for hours about that. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is uh, Heroes from the Hollywood Vampires featuring the aforementioned Johnny Depp on lead vocals right here on another fucking podcast. Thank you. 
promote your band or business or just want to stylize, personalize, or customize your ride, check out vid-decals.com. Want to create and customize your own stickers representing your band or make your own bumper sticker? Vid Decals can do it. All stickers are printed on quality vinyl and can be placed on any flat surface. Stickers are an affordable way to promote your band or business. Go to vid-decals.com to get started. That's vid-decals.com. Vid-decals.com. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level. With their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo, t-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads for the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. Retro Arcade brings Minnesota and surrounding areas arcade games from the days gone by. All of those great games from pizza joints and arcades are available in cocktail units and custom machines. Dozens of favorites from your youth in one machine to complete your game room or man cave. Retro Arcade also sells and services your favorite pinball machines. Find them at facebook.com slash 80 arcade. That's facebook.com slash 80 arcade. Retro Arcade. Your youth is just one click away hey what's going on this is tom arnold i like uh fat women and cocaine and you're listening to izzy presley here on another uh fucking podcast and uh, i know izzy uh from cocaine anonymous meetings i've actually uh seen him at the meetings with uh uh ace Havad johnson from uh fat- i probably shouldn't say this out loud but ace has got a bad coke problem and uh his sponsor is uh is uh, Josh Todd from, and again, I shouldn't say this out loud, but Josh is a sponsor for Buck Cherry. He's addicted to upskirt porn. And uh, and they're both being sponsored by the Eagles, the, uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley. And uh, call your sponsor. Fucking A. And let me tell you, we all need a sponsor in this town. <laughs> Second half of the show brought to you by John Palumbo Design. We love us some John Palumbo. If you have a band, you got a business, you need a logo design, you need a website, hit up our good friend, good buddy, one hell of a model American, John Palumbo. And AMP Productions Laser Engraving Division. You need anything laser engraved, folks. Anything. They can even laser engrave a hot dog bun. That's right. That's how good they are. AMP Productions Laser Engraving Division. Hit them up. AMP Productions Laser. Check that out. Uh, Chris Wise in studio from the Hollywood Vampires and Owl. Um, Johnny Depp did an amazing job on that f- fucking tune, man. Um, I think so, too. Uh, he's, he seems like he's a really dedicated musician. Absolutely. I mean, the the he's done tons of guest appearances and all this stuff before. Maybe people knew about the vampires anyway. Yeah. You know, uh, he's done some really cool stuff with Marilyn Manson. The, the, the list goes on and on. The thing is, uh, he's originally a musician. So I yeah. mean, like like it's like hanging with one of the guys in the band. It's it's it's, but he's extremely prolific and and talented. Um, like I know creative guys and I've been around artists my whole life and you know his music is very interesting his stories are very interesting his take uh, his perception and the way he articulates things I was just talking about this song I Want My Now mm-hmm. and a lot of people uh, might have heard it already it's, it's, it's out we did it on Kimmel <clears throat> we've been playing it all last year too so it's out there quite a bit and uh, it's got this kind of G to A almost you could say like Vaseline or something from STP Um, and and just for example the way he tweaked it with some weird half step movements and the thoughtfulness that goes into the riff and the lyric and and then the collaboration of all the characters is a big part of it but uh, you know if Johnny wasn't Johnny from the movies and all this kind of Hollywood fame stuff I would I would still be super jazzed because the material's so damn good I yeah. mean you know it's piercing it's cutting it's it's got some real balls on it and there's no music out there with balls anymore I mean there, right. there's some but it's like becoming very generic and safe you know I wouldn't mm-hmm. say there's none but there's like you know 
I just heard new corn. I heard new Slipknot. I mean, you know, come on, those guys are beasts, you know. But it's nice to do something <coughs> in the hard rock realm. We're a little more like hard rock with a lot of artistic stuff going on on the record. I think fans are going to dig that. Next year, the record's going to mean something else to you. I can't wait. You know, like by because you kind of understand it more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Johnny, oh, not Johnny, but um, you guys recorded this in Berlin, correct? Yeah, what a great experience. Uh, we were all flying around from show to show and realized that we had a day off in Berlin. I think Buck Johnson pretty much was like pointing it out. And he goes, that's the studio in Berlin where Bowie did Heroes, and we're doing Heroes. And so we went into the studio, and it was gorgeous. We pressed vinyl there, all kinds of oh, cool wow. stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. And... Uh, <clears throat> When Johnny did his vocals, he did this sort of like three mic process, just like Bowie, you know, and or, where the you know the whole story happened where they kissed a girl there and the whole thing is really cool. And it's always kind of ballsy to bring the upright bass in and, and deliver that kind of thing. But I've been trying to get, like not give myself so much of a hard time mm -hmm. and be like, you know, uh, so critical. The part of the upright bass is the the kind of slidey swirliness sometimes anyway that makes it growl and uh so just that's like kind of a inside point of view as a bassist but you know you're you're always kind of like i'm like oh my god national tv on upright bass sometimes can be a little daunting so as long as you can hear well you know but um you know that's it man i'm really happy with that track i think joe perry i love that ebo thing Alice Cooper's so humble and, and to just kind of play a back role and, and share in this kind of crazy, cool band. And then, you know, I got I to gotta tell you, maybe, you know, the heaviest song on here is uh, Tommy singing, funny enough, Get From Round Me, if you guys get a chance to check that out. Tommy Henriksen, the man, the myth, Tommy Henriksen, um, the um alien. I got uh, I got one question here from uh, Bruce from Canada. It says, uh, can you talk about your time with Tal Bachman? Just saw him play a few months back with his dad opening for Skinner. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a, you know, that bass line has a funny story because I'm thinking Steve Harris from Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast, when I'm coming up with some of the bass on that. And when he played me the demo, it wasn't quite the bass it is now and the treatment it got. So it came to life a little more. Uh, but Tal, great songwriter, great person. He and I are reconnected over the years, which is awesome. Um, I think I could see doing something with Tal again. Uh, who knows? He'd be a great collaborator. He writes beautiful songs, you know. Um, and uh, that's a that's the Bob Rock story. So that's like how I ended up in the cult then after Tal Bachman because Bob Rock produced that album and that's oh, okay yeah so that began that began my relationship with bob rock and then he called me for the cult and like nina gordon and like a conaline crush that's a canadian band isn't it uh i don't yeah. know i got billy two, duffy. i got i got two hosers listening right now yeah so billy maybe duffy matt sorm and i did the tracks on that okay yeah 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 okay in in, in uh this horrible place called Maui where we were forced to record <laughs> beyond, <laughs> beyond Good and Evil. <laughs> it was really bad. Oh. I, I would get done with the bass by like 2 p.m. because I knew what I was doing, of course. I was on it, and uh, Bob would go like, Hey, Chris, time for the beach. And I'm like, What are you talking about? He goes, You're done. And I'm like, Really? <laughs> be onto the guitar, and you know, I, I'd be done really quick. And I had a lot of beach time getting a tan. Uh, in Paia, going to Mama's Fish House. Oh, uh, Scotty from Canada says, yeah, so Econoline Crush is a hoser band, Canadian band. <laughs> That's what I thought. I've got, uh, I actually, I've got a couple Twitter questions. This might be a first for the show for the live broadcast. What happened? I love this. Uh, first, Denise says, uh, tell Johnny Denise from Ybor City says, dude, you're killing me already. All right. Um, uh, Johnny is not here, but I have a microphone whenever he <laughs> wants. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> so hopefully you just told him. Probably not. All right, so uh, Jay says, uh, please ask Chris about the cult days, why it ended, and if it's still on good terms with Billy and Ian. Great bass on their tune, War, as well. Oh, thank that's so nice you brought that up. Um, uh, how do I get into this? There's a couple things just came to mind. Uh, first of all, I'm buddies with the cult, and if I see Duffy... Uh, which I have, it's a hug and, and big smiles, and we're quite happy to see each other. 
he's my big brother, and so is Ian. I haven't seen Ian in quite some time, but I, there's no way there'd be a problem if we saw each other, and there was no problem. It, it, actually, there was problems at times, but what when I left, there wasn't. It was just a new opportunity. Okay. So there was. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, you know. Uh, bands aren't easy and once in a while if someone rubs you wrong and you're living with them you know it gets difficult and maybe I was partially right and partially wrong and now I look back at it all and you know go I must have been a young punk compared to them because they were like who's this guy think he is you know Uh, and they were so established but I think that helped at the time and war was and Beyond Good and Evil was the reason why Metallica wanted to audition me because I had a lot of really great. Whoa, whoa, home. time out, time out, time out, time out. Whoa, back up for a second. We're going to finish that. That's why I paused because <laughs> it, it brought up the Metallica audition. Right, well, finish the list and then finish that and then we'll talk about the Metallica audition because I had no idea about this. Izzy, you got to do some homework when you call me up, brother. Well, that, <laughs> but this is the fun of the no, conversation. I don't expect everyone to know everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the fun of the conversation. I have lots of stuff, shit, dude. You, when that's you find why, out shit you don't know about. That's why I'm working on a book. That's like, my amazing. Stories. I am the link to a lot of understanding of things in the sense of, you know, uh, some of the history. I think that's what's going to be fun about connecting it all with, like, what was going on at the times and stuff like that and being involved in my own way and again bob rock uh the only guy he suggested for metallica was me so i went in there with a mega vote of confidence and i was extremely confident anyway because i could play all that stuff on the upright bass and play it with a bow i mean you know yeah yeah uh, there's nothing difficult uh it was once difficult when i was a young teenager right. learning cliff and stuff also, Steve Harris was a big one for me. So the the finger thing was a big deal for Metallica, um, arguably speaking. I mean, you know, it's just what I've always done. I, I started playing with a pick when I joined the cult because they had such a pick kind of history on the bass with a kind of, you know, like little devil or something. When the bass comes in, it's just a thumping eighth note D, but it's got that real kind of mid-range, you know. It's kind of part of the pick and all that. Uh, Metallica was awesome i was there for several hours they don't tell the story in the movie because they picked robert trujillo right um i have another great story about robert trujillo which i should not forget um but i've had a lot of generosity man so you know uh kirk hammett called me and said we've known robert forever you know we thought you looked a little young i mean especially people think i'm young now you should see me back then (laughs) you know and if you watch some kind of monster i look kind of like the boy face still Uh, they I guess there was different opinions in the band, but it came down to Robert. So um, I can tell you about that maybe in the book. Ah. <laughs> but, well, it's, it's funny. Um, Metallica you... is a great yeah. band, and I would have fit awesome. And I'm, I, I, you know, but I get that they that maybe I was a wild card at the time. Mm-hmm. I was pretty youngish in the world still. I think, and um, regardless of my age, my experience wasn't up to Robert's. And he was a very good choice. And I love Robert. And I got to tell you, when I got in the cult soon after that, he called me and knew I had a burden. I was sleeping on Jerry Cantrell's couch and in his sidebands and stuff like that and got back with the cult. And um, I wasn't just on his couch. I was in his guest house and stuff like that. It was first his couch, and we got to know each other. I lived with him for like three years, and that was great, too. Uh, That's how I met Eric from Owl. Okay. Um, I love Eric, by the way, because now we got a guy at Guitar Center. Oh, yeah. Eric's the a and at Guitar yeah. Center and the lead guitar player, co-singer in Owl. Yes, and we are going to get in, get back into Owl at some point here before yeah. we are done. Don't worry, because that's, that's uh, the one of the main reasons you want to come by. Owl is playing August 16th at the Viper Room, and it's their 26th anniversary party, and my drummer, Dan Dinsmore, is coming out from New York. My high school nice. buddies. We've been together for years. It's a real special band. If you guys get a chance to hear it, OwlTheBand.net. Um, We're going to close the show with the Owl song, too, by the way. We'll, we'll play an Owl song. Uh, Dick Chasen says, I know what you mean. My wife rubbed me the wrong way for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also says, I just read he was a child actor or extra, Robert Trujillo, and then he says he was on Chips. Holy shit. Oh, uh, did I tell this story completely, though? Robert called me and heard I got in the cult. Okay. 
Uh, let me back up a little bit because yeah, it's do. almost too much to keep up with. It's unbelievable what happened to me. Uh, but Kirk called me up and said, we're going with Robert. Should we now call Ozzy because we really like you and everyone, everyone digs you. Like you're our sec, you'd like kind of our second pick, but Robert's leaving Ozzy, you know, and this and that. Jason Newstead got it with a phone call. Wow. So then later on in the Jerry Cantrell band that developed with Mike Borden from Faith No More, Mike Borden was in Ozzy and said, you're the guy, where the hell have you been? So that's how I ended up eventually doing Undercover and Prince of Darkness with Ozzy Osbourne. Wow. And so like each guy led to a thing. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, but the Metallica thing was awesome. And uh, Robert Trujillo then later being such a classy guy called me and said, Hey man, I know you've been kind of like on the down a little bit financially and, uh, you don't have to buy any gear or do anything. I've got wirelesses. I've got Ampegs. I've got shit you can borrow and you don't just save your money, man. Just b- borrow my shit. Wow. And I thought, dude, well, that's amazing. No, I know. So, you know, I have very big support and I feel like, uh, a lot of people will ask, like, how'd you meet Ace? How'd this... I think yeah. you love it so much, you just kind of attract it, you know? And the hard work behind it. I mean, you know... Well, hard work's g- important. I'll, yeah. I'm that guy that won't put the bass down for 10 hours. I mean, that's that's just... Everyone knows that about me. That's mm-hmm. why I show up and, you know, I can just have fun and hang out. Then. Well, that's what it's all about. Uh, Scotty wants to know, what was it like playing with Ace at the NHL Winter Classic, Rangers versus Sabres? <laughs> that was the most freezing experience of my life. <laughs> I literally almost panicked and threw down everything and ran inside. I, I, I thought I was getting frostbite on my fingers, and I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm not losing a finger for this shit. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Were you wearing gloves? Yeah. Oh, my God. And there was, like, there was these huge explosions. <laughs> it was wild, man. It was so freaking freezing. Okay, so picture this. Uh, the fire was, was essential to getting through the gig because it was wafts of heat. And, and just a miserable sound check the night before, the in the night cold. Oh, no. Oh, and it was sub-zero. We all wanted to die. We were just like, you know what? Just cut our heads off right now. This is insane. And, and, and the, the, the feeling of like near frostbite and gloves on, gloves off, and this craziness was awful. And we had these uh, hand warmers. And we played it off really good. We looked pretty natural, but we were freaking yeah. pissed off, man. It was awful. And, uh, but it was such a great experience. So then the, the national anthem, it's New Year's Day. There's that eagle flying around, Commander the Eagle. <laughs> you yep. know what I'm talking about? Yep. Fireworks are going off. F-16s are flying over. And I'm standing there with my arm around Ace Freely. It was very patriotic and amazing. Dude, that's fucking cute. Amazing. And I was born in Queens, uh, so you you've experienced the cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is what you're saying. I certainly have. All right, dude. So uh, of course, uh, one of the main reasons you're here is because on the was it the sixteenth, sixteenth of August at the, the Viper Room anniversary party of twenty six years. Right, ago. owl is uh, owl is playing again, and I am going to pull up and let you guys know who else is playing. It's owl along with Compress Collide, uh, Wayward Son. Um, of Limbo? Yeah, these are, uh, I, I think essentially what's going on, it's kind of like 8, 9, 10. Okay. Or, you know, around the half hours there. Gotcha. We should be hitting the stage at 10 o'clock. Um, gotcha. Last time, they weren't going to let more people in because it got so damn busy, and that was a treat. Uh, so I would say get the tickets, you know, ahead of time so you can get in. Just just so you don't, like, if, if that's your night, you don't show up and go, oh, I can't even get in. I'll be here at the parking lot waiting to meet everyone well and then this might be important too is i mean with everything that's going on with the viper room is this going to be the last birthday party for the viper room do you know have an idea what's the, going on with i that? think the brand is going to continue and i think that the location everything on sunset's changing so yeah uh you know when the house of blues went down i was kind of like ooh, that feels weird and uh to only see a celebrity kind of culture and a, and a pop culture and obviously we have hip hop and latin and a ton of stuff but the main point is there's there's sunset is rock and roll always and i think uh people investing into the town much like times square should be a little conscious of what they're investing in and not taking the good parts out no i agree and that's i mean that's why i'm so bummed that they're moving amoeba 
I know. It's, I don't like any of it. It's very uncomfortable for me. No, it is. It's like yeah. you're taking away the things that, uh, that, that draw people here. You know, I mean, not that there's people coming here just to go to Amoeba, but... It's be a super mall if they keep it up, man. Oh, just man. like Times Square, you know. It's yeah, like, exactly. It's still New York City. It's still Hollywood. But, like, let's not cheapen it. Yeah, exactly. And But, of course, unlike uh, Times Square, now you have... Here, you have people pissing and shitting in the streets. <laughs> you know? Oh, we got to clean it up. That's another... We, I don't go politics. Oh, I know. No. I don't either. I don't either. Uh, we we'll uh, lose all our energy uh, instead of have fun. Dick Jason says, I, I would hate to see Viper Room or Rainbow or the Whiskey disappear. I don't think the Rainbow or the Whiskey are going anywhere. Um, I, I don't think so. Um, the Rainbow, of course, is where the vampires started. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah. People, a lot of people don't know that story. I, gosh, I've been drinking with Lemmy at the bar you know, I was over there for years. I've been over there too much. You know, I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I. No, I've been there too much. Um, but it is such a community of musicians still. Yeah. And so fantastic to see. I mean, literally, you could bump into anyone there, but it's got that dirge, man. Yeah. You know, and uh, people still like to go there for pizza and all that stuff. But the lair upstairs is. The, the guys in the the band and, and the group of drinkers called the Hollywood Vampires mm-hmm. were so unruly that the owners and managers, whatever, were like, dudes, go upstairs and, like, at least have your own, like, unruly, wacko zone to be yourselves, you know. And um, they all died, every single one of them, except for Alice Cooper. Well, and Mickey Dolenz. Mickey Dolenz is still kicking. Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah, I kind of heard that, I guess, or something. Yeah. <laughs> He's still out there. I think that's so cool. I mean, you know. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Who would have thought that one of the guys from the Monkees was one of the drinking buddies of Alice Cooper? I don't know. I don't know if it's like like to get in the band, like it's a compliment and also like you're so messed up. You're like so vampiric that you can be in the band. It's kind of a complicated uh, thing. But uh, I've had many years of enjoying just sitting down next to Lemmy. And I had this funny story where I was like, at the rainbow with Lemmy chatting in the same old corner you always saw him at <clears throat> he's such a gentleman you know and the cult were friends with him I mean you know I've, I've been in all these bands and the English thing was obviously that's a strong connection when you're the cult and motorhead and yeah yeah so they knew all the guys and stuff so I remember chatting with Lemmy having a few drinks going oh Lemmy I gotta get going man I got a flight in the morning he's alright see you later and I, I you know there's really no discussion about what we were doing the next day yeah, I think he even said, "Yeah, I have to get out of here too," uh, and uh, <laughs> like tomorrow. So we get to like uh, the American in Amsterdam, which is obviously you know L.A. to Amsterdam, popular uh, main city hub. Mm-hmm. We all check in, standing there with Duffy, and the elevator opens as we're going up with our, <laughs> our stuff, and, and there's Lemmy. <laughs> 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 You know, it's like, oh. it's just like, you know, and it's just crazy because he would just be there playing that damn game and, and, and just, just it all into it. And peripherally, he'd, say, he'd see me with a cigarette and go, hey, Chris, hey, Lemmy, what's up? You know, it's like real cash, you know. But I always told him I love his, his uh, distortion sound. I thought that was a huge, huge benefit to the bassist of the world to realize there was more sonically yeah yeah and and to be so heavy and raw and almost like almost punk but uh oh they were punk yeah yeah waterhead was a punk band it was metal too you know it was like punk metal or whatever you want to call it It or as they said it's rock and roll (laughs) yeah motorhead and we play rock and roll music yeah i got to do ace of spades all last year with the vampires oh dude that's so fucking badass i kind of put a I can't quite do him exactly, but I kind of put on almost like somewhere between him and a Hetfield or something on. And it worked. And it was really fun. Yeah. So it was like, uh, if you want to gamble, yeah. No. (laughs) 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 No, but Hetfield's a great singer. I mean, but no, I just, I found a a thing that I, that made it work or whatever. And it's a daunting thing. Just like now, uh, uh, Owl just finished this new track. Uh, we got invited to play, uh, invited to do a Sabbath song on this uh, vinyl release that's coming out. And uh, I, I picked Children of the Grave. And then as we got into it, I was having panic attacks because I'm like, what on earth am I doing this song for? <laughs> there's, there's nothing, like it's done already, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so we ended up doing the intro embryo as well, and I did all these upright basses uh, and layered it. And Eric Bradley played these like kind of chimey guitars, 
and then the song starts and I put bowed upright bass on the top in a guitar range and really dressed it up and orchestrated oh, wow. it. wow. And then uh, I sang it, and Eric's co-singing and harmonizing with me, which is a really fun new thing. And now all the kind of back-and-forth voices. Dan Dinsmore's drumming is just... This is going to be really fun, you guys. And then the I outro, you know, the children of the grave. And all that became guitar, like it is, like I only did, but I also did my bow freakiness. Nice. And... You guys out there that care about this kind of music, I am stoked. You know, do you know who else is on the record? Uh, I heard Zach Sabbath and of some course. really, some really yeah. cool. I, oh my gosh, I, I, it's been real busy lately. I've been doing a bit of a move on top of everything, so I, I'm. It's been a little. My brain is fried. But, I'm um, telling you, just move into Johnny's town. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, I know. I'm just giving you shit. Because Johnny owns like, what, nine houses on a block or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. Something like, it's, I it's, don't it's, talk it's, about it's, that stuff. It's public knowledge, Chris. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't... <laughs> just move into the town. <laughs> if you You're funny, a, dude. If you need a general store with a guitar section, I'll open one there for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the place where I wrote a lot of owl music is basically, uh, unfortunately, wasn't intended to enough. So there's maybe some structural problems. And I've been getting my upright basses out and all this stuff into storage until I figure out what's going on. And uh, that was my first thing was just knowing all my weapons were in order, you know. Yeah, right. You know, because if a wall goes down and I can't get my upright bass down the stairs, I'm going to be pissed off. Right. Well, you um, uh, you have a uh, you have some sponsorships. Yes, uh, w- one of my real just tanks of a sponsor sponsorship in the sense of just like they're bulletproof and just always there for me is uh, Ampeg. When I was with. Uh, you know, the cult finally, and that actually, Trujillo, I didn't have to hit up because I ended up getting all these endorsements. Um, but the stories about Trujillo is really much more about the kindness, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And that was really awesome to get some real, to, after the drudgery of making it in the music business and then having more hard work and money and crap to deal with, to get a little kindness was, uh, you know, and I've received a lot of that. And I, I, as hard as the hard times have been, there's always been mega kindness, right? Just people coming out of the woodwork to uh, to want me to play something, and there's always money, and just thank God, you know, it's awesome. Uh, I do have a question about the Metallica tryout, though. So you you you're with them a few hours. Uh, how many songs were you? Did you go over with them? And what was your favorite one to play with them? Uh, Lars tried to trick me and counted out of nowhere. I remember to see if I was on the ball. He's like, we're going to do a little song called Battery. It was like, you know, or no, he, he said battery first, and then it was, you know, and I was like, I spun around and put my foot on his bass drum and stared at him and kicked, <laughs> kicked the hell out of that song, man. I'm telling you, if you, if you don't think, if you don't think I went in there after having like five weeks of preparation, like an Olympic warrior of some type. Right. You're out of your mind. How many songs did they ask you to learn? It was five. I How many songs did you learn? Well, I was all over every record and thinking about... What they really wanted was a cliff-type finger player. So yeah, I'm that yeah. guy, really, essentially, I w- you know, could have been. And uh, because I have those kinds of chops. So uh, th- the whole thing was, I think, was Enter Sandman, of course, because they needed to hear... There's an array of things. Battery, Master of Puppets... Um, I might have wrote it down somewhere in some um, some uh, book or something, but I, I you know it's it's it, it, it's there somewhere. Oh, it, Master of Puppets. Um, that's four, right? So I think I'm well, doing okay, pretty good. Battery, <laughs> uh, Enter Sandman, Master of Puppets. That's three. Uh. <laughs> what else do I can't remember right now? Is he <laughs> told you I'm moving? Uh, I'm, I'm going through you. boxes of books. Going, do I need to keep this or what? <laughs> yes, you do. I know. <laughs> then I box everything up, and I'm like, is that special book in there? And then I'm taking it out again. I'm just so sick of it. So over it. So over it. But did you get to do my favorite song, the what? thing that should not be? No, we didn't do that. Oh, that's a fucking. No, jeez, Louise, I can't remember these songs. I was Enter Sandman, Master of Puppets, Battery, Nothing Else Matters, 
There's four. Nothing else matters? I had to sing the harmonies. Real? Ah. Right? Which I could. And of course you could. And then there was one more. Shit. I don't know. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there are harmonies in Metallica songs. Oh, no. James Hetfield's an amazing singer, man. Come oh, on. He's now. great. Um, come he's on. He's great. Now. Guy's unbelievable. He's great. All right. So Owl is uh, August If he wants 16th. to start a side band, James and I would be deadly. <laughs> if he wants to put Metallica aside for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that would be badass. Uh, which Owl song do you want me to end, end with this? Well, I think this, this is... Uh, I got a lot of real crazy, almost like uh, progressive, almost like Faith No More, crazy bass things. And some people love that, but Lake Ego is a wonderful okay. song. Um, we'll do Lake Ego. It's a complete tumultuous male-female relationship, which... I have a lot of experience with. Uh, Mike H says, uh, Mike is my lone uh, YouTube listener, um, but he's actually listening live tonight. Um, he says, great stories, Chris. And Mike actually just had me on his podcast last night, nice. which was uh, very nice of him. Thank you again Nice for that. to meet all you guys writing in, by the way. That's really cool. Uh, he says, great stories, Chris. Thanks for joining Izzy's show. Go back and listen to the last time he was on, Mike, um, and sharing them. I really enjoyed them, despite the fact that I'm still stuck at the office here in Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Well, Go out there and get yourself a Juicy Lucy, baby. Yeah, Juicy Lucy and a Mick Golden Light just for <laughs> me. Um, uh, people want to find you, Chris. Where they can where can they find you? Well, my last name's the best way to find it uh, because it's spelled differently than W-I-S-E. It's W-Y-S-E. Y. Well, look at Zach Wilde has a Y. Vampires has been spelt with a Y. Oscar Wilde. So what happened was English... Uh, changed a bit old english uses the y differently so i have a really old name and that's why people get confused they always go weiss and weiss is another name so that's why the to articulate what it actually is is good so it's your actually your real name oh yeah 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 not a not a big fake name like izzy presley the owl came about as a uh i didn't know it was your fake name even what the hell's going on here? <laughs> my, real name, <laughs> my real name is Tommy Elwell. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Yeah. Um, what the hell are we talking about now, Izzy? Uh, we were talking about how to find you and your last name. <laughs> uh, just look up Chris Wise on Facebook or Instagram. Chris Wise Owl Man on Instagram. Owltheband.net. Um, of course, Hollywood Vampires. Easy to find. Um, and I think... I got to get into Twitter. I don't enjoy Twitter. I know. It's just political bullshit. I don't want to say anything. But there's but there's a lot of porn stars on there, so you can see a lot of titties. Well, that's not terribly bad. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. And uh, before we go, I'm going to say this. Um, I'm holding in my hand right now an autographed photo of Christina Aguilera. Um, the next person that donates to the show $50 or more. Is Christina single now? Uh, I have no idea. Let's find out. Let's yeah. Google. Okay. Well, I suppose we can Google that right now. But uh, the next person to donate to the show, PayPal, is uh, Izzy Presley at Yahoo.com. Uh, $50 or more will receive an autographed Christina Aguilera photo on Izzy Presley pick pack. And um, I'll throw in something else nice for you, too. That Chris, uh, We'll have Chris autograph something. I don't know what yet, but we will. Sure. It might be my cock. I don't know. So maybe you'll get my cock in the mail. I don't know. We'll see. All well, right. That's kind of Is intimate, Izzy. Christina I don't see this happening. Egg you. Aguilera single. Huh. Is Christina Aguilera single? Uh, 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 does she have a husband? Oh, yeah. She's married, brother. Matthew Reuter, 2010 through... Nothing. So that means she's still married. So there's that. <laughs> All right. Dude, Chris, thank you again for coming by, man. This is a lot of fun. It's always fun to chat. And uh, it's nice to hear these stories. And I can't Oh, wait. my gosh. Yeah, I yeah. honestly can't wait for the book because I know you have a lot of stories. That- oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think I found the perfect writer, uh, uh, gentleman, John York, that, that writes a lot. You can find him online, too. He's a, we, he works for Owl and helps out Owl. Um, do you see how Ace kind of uh, utilized kind of John Ostrowski for the book? And, yeah, yeah. And Ace has such a good book, and and I wouldn't 
get into the darkness of it all. I mean, that's just your your own personal struggles a bit, but I wouldn't really... I'd want to, like, shine a nice light on everybody. Quirky stuff and weird stuff, maybe. Right. But, like, um, you know, good God. I, I've almost come to blows with band members and stuff, so, you know... It's well, like that's ba- part of being in a band. <laughs> you know, it's like... You know? Uh, and, and, and the reasons why I felt at the time were super important, and now I could give a shit. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. The time is the time, and the time has passed, yeah. and it's like, fucking whatever. Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right. Uh, please make sure you guys do hit up all the sponsors, and, uh, of course, the social media is at Real Izzy Presley all the way across the board. And uh, here's Lake Ego from Owl closing out the show. Don't forget, next person to donate $50 or more, an autographed Christina Aguilera photo, an Izzy Presley pick pack, and something autographed by the one and only Chris Wise. Tomorrow night, Kip Winger via the phone line, live, 6 p.m. California time. I say good day. Good day. Don't forget what I lack in talent. I make up for in cock. <laughs>